Turn the lights on low. Okay, turning the lights to low. Turn the lights on high. Okay, turning the lights to high. Turn the lights off. Okay, turning the lights off. Hi guys, welcome back to my project box. In my hands I have the uh, Sonoff Dual. This is the R2 version, which is um, not the latest one. But uh, because it's so big, I believe it's a little bit more hackable. There's a bit more space inside to do things if you so wish. But um, I haven't quite found a use for it yet. And I thought it'd be nice to do something just a little bit different. Um, since it has two channels, I was inspired by a previous video where um, I used one of these um, class X or class Y capacitors, safety capacitors, I use them to dim non-dimmable light bulbs because um, a lot of LED bulbs simply can't be dimmed or don't tolerate dimming at all. So a lot of light bulbs that on the packaging it says non-dimmable, uh, well you can actually dim them with a the capacitor and, and in my previous video you can actually go and check that out. Um, but I thought it would be quite cool to use the two channels on, um, on my Sonoff Deal. Uh, one to do high high dimming setting and another one to do like a, a low light sort of mood, mood light setting um, and then the other one is the on off switch and uh, then uh, we'll have a sort of dual smart dimmer of sorts so uh, hang on tight and uh, let's get started and I'll explain to you how exactly how I've done it so this is my son of dual R2 I've had it for quite some time, but I've never really quite found a use for it yet. Um, I, th I thought it was quite handy that it had um, two relay outputs. So it's not the latest one. Um, the latest one is quite small, but I think this one's more hackable because it's, it's a little bit bigger, so the things are more spaced out a bit further. So because in a previous video, I... Um, I showed you how it's possible to dim non-dimmable LED bulbs. Now, it, it, it just involved a simple switched capacitor that you, that you put in line with the bulb and you, um, the capacitor is just bridged out by a switch. I can demonstrate that and you can watch that video. So, with the capacitor in line, the LED bulb is dimmed quite substantially and then you have a high-low switch which allows you to have a maximum and a low setting and it works rather well and it allows you to dim um, non-dimmable LED bulbs well a lot of a lot of non-dimmable LED bulbs so I thought could we not make it dimmer with our Sonoff um, dual uh, could we not switch in a capacitor and use use one relay output to switch the capacitor for high-low setting and the second relay output we can use to turn the bulb on and off. So you have high, low and off and on. So let's open this uh, little sucker up and we have a look inside. I think the cover just pops off rather easily. Because uh, Sonoff do intend you to open this thing because you can actually control the switch inputs on this header here. Uh, they don't solder the header pins in, you have to do that yourself. Um, but it allows you to connect switches to these, um, to these uh, inputs here that you can control the relays manually without Wi-Fi control. So uh, let's uh, whip the board out and have a quick look. So 
So there we go. So what you've essentially got is you've got the live coming in and then it goes through this big fat um, brass bridge uh, which feeds the common to the two relays and then you have the relay out going to this pin for the one channel and the other relay out going to this pin for the other channel. Okay, enough about what's inside. Let's stick some wires inside this thing just to make it work. So to start, it's going to need live and neutral supply feed. So let's stick uh, a live wire into the live input terminal and a neutral wire into one of the neutral connections which are all just linked together. Next uh, we'll stick the capacitor and what we'll do is we'll put the capacitor across both channel, both relay output channels. Now our light bulb will connect to one of the neutral terminals and then to one of the relay outputs. In this case it's the channel number two. So it's the one at the bottom and uh, the capacitor obviously sits across both channels. So we've got our live and neutral going into the input live and neutral terminals and all your neutrals are common together and then you've got your channel 1 and channel 2 out and the capacitor goes across those two channels and uh, one of the output channels goes to the bulb and the bulb's neutral goes to the common neutrals. So uh, let's see how it works. Lights on high Lights on low. Turn lights off. So it works. It's also possible to add an external uh, switch to uh, manually turn the lights on and off as well. And for that you have to connect the switch to these header pins. And there's two input channels for um, the two separate relay outputs, but uh, we'll just test that quickly to see if it works. That works as well. So we have Wi-Fi control and manual wall switch control. The only downside with um, with this uh, uh, son of dual is that you have to solder in these header pins yourself. Uh, it doesn't come with them, but the holes are there. You just have to put the header pins in and solder them yourself. So in order to get voice control in Google Home, I had to automate these switch positions by setting up some routines. So the first routine is uh, for the lights to be off, and that is with both switch positions open. And then uh, for the lights to be in the dim position, uh, the out one needs to be in the on position and out two needs to be in the off position. And for the lights to be on in the bright position, it's uh, the um, out two is on and out one is off. And that gives you lights on full bright. And after that, uh, we have um, automation on Google Home. Obviously, you can use Tasmota and Home Assistant and Alexa and all sorts of other ways to do it. So while making this video, um, I sort of came to the conclusion that uh, the Sonoff Dual R2 is not as well suited for the job as the uh, Sonoff um, Dual R3. The R3 is the much smaller version. However, this is what I had at hand and I don't actually own an R3. But actually, after looking into it, the R3 is uh, simply much better suited for the job. Um, and the reason for that is it's physically smaller so it can go inside the light switch box and it has screw terminals um, that you can terminate uh, a light switch onto it so you can have a manual external light switch whereas in this particular unit you have to um, solder in some header pins or solder wires directly to the board so with the uh, deal r3 um, you don't need to solder anything you can just um, pick up a live supply and put it to a light switch and then take the switch live back to one of the um, um, switched inputs um, and terminate it straight with a screw terminal. And um, yeah, you just need to add the capacitor. So 
I think this is still more hackable in some ways, but for this particular purpose, I think the R3 is better suited. But uh, as you can see, this works perfectly well. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video um, and uh, my sort of novel use for, uh, for the Sonoff Duel. And um, let me know what you think. I will mention though um, that uh, this capacitor value would have to be adapted to how many lights uh, you t intend to dim at one given time. So if you're doing like six lights or four lights, you'd have to use a slightly larger value capacitor. And um, also what your sort of dim setting uh, would be would also depend on how bright you want it to be or how dim you want it to be. You'd have to change the value of this capacitor and a little bit of experimentation would be required for that. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching and um, I hope to catch you on the next one.